This is the second video on an introduction to sequences. The last one was on arithmetic sequences. So here we have a sequence and we want to first just identify like how is this sequence changing? How's it growing? Now the first number is the first term. And I could say well oh it's going by 4 so plus 4 plus 4. Oh that's not it. Well let's try another thing. Multiply by 3. Multiply by 3. Yeah. Multiply by 3. Yeah. That's it. So I'm going to kind of put a little, this is being multiplied by 3 times 3 to get the next term times 3. So I would get 54 for the next term. So I can, add, can start to kind of build a table here. So first term is 2, second term is 6, third term is 18. And if I wanted to graph them, I just kind of take that information. So first term is 2, second term is 6, third term 2, 4, 6, 8. And so I can see that this is not linear. It kind of maybe looked like it was originally, so it's really good to kind of plot it out. And now once again, we talked about in the other video that we don't want to connect these. these this is called a discrete graph because it's term 1. That's a point. Term 2, that's a value. Term 3. So there's no kind of halfway terms. So make sure you don't connect them. Now another thing is we often, when we're graphing, we want to find out what's happening at when x, or in this case, n is 0. So this is very similar to x and y, or x and f of x. But it's important to realize that there's some differences, such as this is going to be discrete and not a continuous graph. So we want to kind of know what happens when that n is 0. So we can see that when we were going to get the next term, we were multiplying by 3, multiplying by 3. So if I wanted to go backwards, I would do the opposite. I would be dividing by 3. So 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds. So 0, 2 thirds. Now why is that point important? When we start to um, create our explicit equation, we're going to be using this in our equation as one of the, the ways to kind of help us define the equation. So we want to identify the type of sequence. So when we're multiplying to get from one term to the next, this is called a geometric sequence. So this is when you multiply to get one term to the next. The explicit equation once again, we're going to be using this. This is our term number, and this is our term value. And some books will use this as a sub n, and that's totally fine. Our book just happens to use this, so I'm going to stick with that. So to find the explicit equation, we're going to find the t of n, and we have this base. So we're always like taking something and multiplying by 3, multiplying by 3, multiplying by 3. So we're going to start with this 3. This is our base. We're kind of our multiplier. And we're raising it to a power each time we're doing, we're like to the first power, to the second power, to the third power. However, we can see if we plugged in, so I'm going to kind of take a couple values, I'm going to do it over here. If I did something like 3 to the first power, that's equal to 3, not 2. So this y-intercept is going to impact this. So in front here, this is your y-intercept. So we're going to take that into account. So let's kind of put this in here. So we're saying t of 1 is equal to 2 thirds times 3 to the first power, because this is the n. So 3 to the first power is 3, 2 thirds of 3 is 2. So t to the first power is 2. Let's do another one just to kind of verify. t to the second is, so here's my equation, 2 thirds, this is the y-intercept, times 3, this is the multiplier, 
to the exponent, and the exponent in this case is it's the second term, so we're going to put power of 2. So t to the second equals 2 thirds of 9. 2 thirds of 9 is 6. So t to the second power is 6, and you can see that this works. So this is the explicit equation. Once again, you need to include the find the y intercept. You do that by going backwards to find the zero term. Okay. However, it's growing by, that's your multiplier, that's your base. Now, a recursive equation is how do you go from one term to the next term? And how we went from one term to the next term, so I'm going to go, I'm going to find the next term, t to the, t to the n plus 1. So I'm going to find the next term, and the way that I do that is I take one term, like t to the n, like 2, and I multiply it by 3. I could take this term, 6, and multiply it by 3 to get the next term. Okay, so that's that. But this is not sufficient. The other piece you need to give in a recursive equation is you also need, so there's two pieces of information you need to get. One is the equation, you know, using your multiplier, and the second piece of information is one point. So it could be t to the first equals 2. Because there are an infinite number of graphs that look just like this, okay? but are, are kind of, you know, well, you can't really see that, but basically are the same exact equation, but just slid up or down. So we want to fix this by giving one of the terms. So make sure you do that when you write your recursive equations. Okay, well, good luck with that. Once again, if you haven't already checked out the arithmetic sequence video, do that as well. Good luck.